It's the Be a Big Podcast. We're here at Naugatuck Valley Community College for the fifth annual Brass City Comic Con. Uh, we're going to have tons of great interviews. Uh, Alex Simmons, Frank McLaughlin, who worked for DC Comics, a bunch of local artists. There might even be a free lunch comics appearance. Stay tuned for that. Uh, and so much more. So let's go check out the fifth annual Brass City Comic Con. It's the Being a Big Podcast. We're back here at Brass City Comic Con with the Vic Prieto uh, and his book, Favorite. Tell us a little about how you got into uh, comic book-ing, I guess is how you call it. Um, well, I guess I've been reading them my entire life. Um, I mean, since I was a small child, my father got me into them. And I've always wanted to draw, and I've been making art since I could hold a crayon. So um, I went to art school, and for my senior thesis, we had to come up with a big senior project. And I thought, what better time to create a comic book than, like, right now? So I worked on that for about a year. And before that, was about a year worth of ideas before I kind of came up with the final thing. So uh, just from reading them, I just kind of started creating them. And um, I plan to do more. It's just my only one for now. And kind of... Uh, getting things done on the side here and there. I also teach full-time uh, doing art, so. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I can't spend as much time, I guess, as I'd like to, but um, I just really love comics and the uh, sequential art and storytelling of them. So, uh, what is a little bit about favorite? So if someone's wondering if they want to get into it, what is uh, the book about? Um, well, it's a pretty short story. It's, um, I kind of just tell people it's like an evil toy story. Um, the gist of it is that there's a, um, a favorite toy of this young girl, and she gets kind of beat up, kind of, if you think about Woody from Toy Story, except if he got kind of too muddy and beat up and the, the mother threw her away, so threw the favorite doll away. Um, the doll, though, gets very jealous that she's thrown away and there's all these other toys left, so she kind of comes back with a vengeance against the other toys still left in the room and to kind of reclaim her title as the favorite doll. Ah, oh, wow. That's pretty intense. Sounds good, though. I like it. So uh, you said you teach. Where? Uh, what kind of, do you do art classes? Do you teach I do. at school? Uh, I teach in Torrington, uh, oh. elementary school art, K through five. Oh, so wow. yeah, I teach full time, you know, during the school year. So right now mm. I'm off during the summer, which is great. So I get to spend more time doing my art. Um, I do that, you know, after work too. So I'm doing it year round, but during the summers I get more time for it, which is awesome. That's cool. So not only do you do your favorite book, but you do all this other stuff as well. Yes. Um, what is your favorite comic book out there right now that people, if you're going out to the store, what do you grab? Um, I always buy Spider-Man. He's my favorite hero of all time. So uh, I've been buying Amazing and then, you know, Superior and all that other kind of stuff. So I always pick up Spider-Man and then, you know, kind of whatever else catches my eye. I like, you know, all those like little mini comics and short stories and stuff. I like a lot of Mark Millar's things that come out because they're like a nice little condensed mm -hmm. mini series that you can read the entire thing and you have a solid story. Um, but Spider-Man, I guess, is just my favorite just because I kind of grew up with him and he's been my, you know, I always read Spider-Man comics and that's what I got hooked on. All right, cool. So if someone wanted to get favorite, is there a place they could pick it up at it? Or a website or something? Sure. Um, you can find uh, my art, prints, comics, and everything else and keep up with what I've been doing on my website. It's just www.victorpriato.com. All right, so there you go. So check it all out. Uh, check out favorite. Sounds very interesting. I might even pick up one myself. Stay tuned for more here on the Being a Big Podcast. All right, and we're back here in the Media Week podcast. We're here with Mike, the creator of Broadside. We found a video game at Broad City Comic Con. We didn't think we'd find one, but we did. So tell us what about Broadside, how you got started with that. Well, uh, 
I originally just thought about a bullet hell shooter where you were mainly just trying to deal with all the bullets flying at you, and the shooting itself was kind of automatic. It already kind of is in bullet hells. I mean, who takes their finger off the trigger? So the premise is to use your shield, your defenses, and target specific objects while trying to deal with the bullets. Lots of them. Way too many, really. And uh, it kind of takes elements of space and 1600 style ships broadsiding each other, hence the title. So you say not only do you have this game, but you have other games going out there as well. What other games did you have going out there that people can can play? I made one called Until Dawn, which is a bit of a puzzle platformer, escape from the dungeon kind of game. Uh, it's in the vein of the Prince of Persia, and it's, I've been told, very difficult. You're mainly up against the clock. And uh, one other I made with a bet with my friends that I couldn't build a game in a month. Incidentally, you don't want to do that in February. <laughs> it's an arcade shooter where you bunch to shoot a bunch of goofy ninjas, bears made of knives, napalm kittens, and other bizarre things. Sounds like the Deadpool game. <laughs> there is a character in there who's not far <laughs> off Deadpool, but that was not my doing. <laughs> so uh, if you wanted to play Broadside, is there a way to download? Is there a place to download it at or anything they could get a hold of it? Sure. All the games are free to play at congregate.com. Just look up M. Stango, which is my name, and you can access all of my games for free. Oh, sweet. So take a look at Broadside and all the other games, and I'll be back with more right here at uh, Broad, um, Brass City Comic Con. And we're back here at Brass City Comic Con, and we ran into Audrey, who was next to the uh, Broadside booth, who draws off of pictures these awesome paintings, which are really cool. I saw the Django one. That was the one I think that's my favorite one. And the Phantom of the Opera one. That's my favorite one. I love that. That was my favorite Phantom of the Opera. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that <laughs> so how did you get involved in uh, painting? Did you start? Um, I've, just, I've just been doing art for as long as I can remember. And, you know, I, I grad, you know, through schooling and, you know, just, um, you know, tweaking my my technique, um, I gradually learned how to make my artwork actually look presentable. Nice. So how do you pick what you want to, is it stuff you find interesting or is it just? Usually just stuff I find interesting. Um, I enjoy like, particularly I enjoy movie characters, like we have Lon Chaney over here, we have Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. Uh, another Elephant Man. Elephant Man, yes, very much so. Um, and of course, we got another Lon Chaney over there as Quasimodo. Mm. But I also paint people that I, you know, that send me pictures that I find really interesting. Like this is a friend of mine who specializes in uh, vintage clothing, and she took a picture of herself like that. And I said, I have to paint it. There you go. So, is there anywhere people can online can get to your paintings, or do you have a Facebook or something people can get uh, yes, to? Yes, I do. I have a Facebook page. Um, I have a selection of my paintings on there. My name is Audrey Kantrowitz. I know the last name is kind of long, <laughs> but bear with me. <laughs> um, it's K-A-N-T-R-O-W-I-T-Z if you want to check that out. Um, I am also a member of the Friends of Joseph Carey Merrick Foundation, which um, you may know him better as the Elephant Man. And it's, um, it's a very, uh, um, very active Facebook page. We love answering questions. We love talking with people, hence my painting of, of Joseph over there. And, um, you know, it, just, I would, it would be really nice to, um, to have uh, people come by and, you know, see my work. I'm, hopefully I'm going to be having my work with um, the creator of Broadside, Michael Stango. So hopefully we're going to be setting up a joint website soon. Oh, that'd be awesome. Be able to, you'll be able to play his games, and I'll have my artwork there. So hopefully it'll be a good, good mesh. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for giving us the time. Your paintings are very impressive, thank I got to say. Thank you very much. So we'll be back with more here in the Being a Big Podcast in just a bit.
We're back here at the Being a Big Podcast at Brass City Comic Con with the one, the only. You've seen him before in our podcast. You've heard him before in our podcast. It's the guys from Free Lunch Studios. It's Matt Ryan, everybody. And, I got Emily and his me. intern, Emily. Yeah. So, Matt, what's going on new in the Free Lunch Studio world? Man, we've been doing a lot. Um, in May, we had three comics come out. Um, we did the Dream, we had the Dream, Dream Crusader book that came out from the 24 Piece Charity, uh, which is pretty awesome. If you go to 24piece.com, uh, or yeah, 24piece.com, um, they raise money for different charities. Um, then we had the Black Roses comic come out, which is a science fiction uh, space pirate experience. And then Unhappy Grandma number two finally came out, made its debut at the Hartford Comic Con. And then uh, the, the, the nearly calamitous taming of PZ hasn't even come out yet. That, that's a children's middle reader book that I illustrated, 60 of my illustrations in there. And it's, it's been insane. It's been busy. Wow. And besides all that, you have all the usual stuff going on at Free Lunch. Yep. The Monday night jams and all the other still stuff as well. Still doing the jams, still doing the Friday classes. Emily and I have been touring libraries and doing classes at different libraries all over the state. I think we have two more to go and then we're done for a while. Um, we just did a six hour mini comic workshop yesterday, which was a lot of fun. We had a decent sized crowd for that. It's, it's been fun, it's been a whirlwind, you know, and we're still producing. Um, I, I, I've got like three comics ready to go. Wow. And I want to talk, I, I definitely want to talk to you guys about the Food Fight comic that's coming out. It's going to be an all ages experience, a lot of kid friendly kookiness, Tex Avery homage stuff. Yeah, definitely. We'll definitely be a part of that. Um, but not only uh, the Conan book that you've been talking about every time we interview you, is that still coming? I just, wait, wait, wait. The one that, what, the, which the Conan esque comic book that you were going to work on. You know what? It, we haven't touched it in a while. Steve and I talked uh, about it a little bit. I don't think it's gone. Okay. I just think it's a matter of timing. Like okay. Steve just got married, and he's going through a move now. So we got a we've got some life experiences stuff before we can commit to, like really nailing down that page rate, uh, like that the rate of churning a page or two a day. Mm. Um, I don't think it's done. It's just we're not there yet. All right. So keep an eye out for that because yeah, we've heard about it for so long that we're like. We're cramping at the bit. Um, so other books you got going on. You got these other books. Uh, I Sherman, of course, was the original one. Number two, coming finish, soon. I finish, yeah, I have to finish a page. Uh, Wally has contacted me. He wants me to retool the last page of the book, and then he's going to be ready to put that out. He's another guy. Big shout out to Wally and Krista. He's getting married in October. Oh, look at that! Congratulations, Wally. Wally's been on the podcast. He's a uh, you know he's an old old friend of the podcast. Now that we have old friends now. Um, so, not only that, you got uh, any other jam things coming up anyone needs to know about or stuff like that? Well, Should we Emily, ask Emily? Emily's going to host an improv. Ah, show. Emily, the intern. That's your official name now. I don't know if you know that from now on. You're going to have cards that say Emily, the intern on it. So, uh, you're handling the improv jam. Tell us what about that. Yeah. Well, on Monday night at 7.45, I'm going to host improv because my name is Emily and it's improv. Ah, there you go. We're going to... Dude, just we're gonna have a bunch of awesome improv games that we can do as groups, as pairs, as the entire pe group of people that's there. It's gonna be really fun. So, is there any more of those coming up besides just this Monday, or is it down the road before you go back to uh, the old school? Not yet. No. Uh, well, it depends on like, did you, did you come to the jam during the school year? On occasion, you would. Like if you have the if you have the gap in the schedule, I don't see why not. It would be a blast. Yeah, because we're not gonna have this edited by Monday, so. Yeah, well, it's, it's hard for some of these <laughs> for some kids to do the jam during the school year. Yeah. That's a legit thing. That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Like we lose, like we've got a decent crew that's coming now. We're getting close to 20 people on, on, on Monday nights. Wow. That'll take a hit again when school starts, and then you'll see like a different crowd start showing up. So it's really tough to tell, but an improv thing, we, we should be able to do that. I would totally do that again if okay. I had the chance. All right. Yeah, it's done. Just, just Look at that. Exclusive. Just More improvs coming, so stay tuned to that. Just happen. Uh, so, of course, stay tuned to that at the website, which is? Freelunchcomics.com. There you go. So not only uh, do you have that stuff going on, any other cons people can look for you at coming up in the uh, recent and near future? No. 
Okay. I don't. Um, <laughs> I'm taking August off. Ah. Uh-huh. And then uh, I'll probably be sharking around in New York for jobs, but I don't think I'm going to have a presence there. Um, I'm going to miss Boston. I'll still be at the Plainville show because it's in the backyard. Mm. And then I'll be at Scott's show in East Windsor in your backyard. Yes. Um, this means I have to have it in the podcast while you're not doing anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Good time to grab you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, the show. Break the streak of Christmas episodes. Oh, yes. The special Christmas episodes where we sit back and talk Rem- about. Reminisce eggnog, by the fire. Eggnog and Yule logs. Yes. Mm. Ryan makes his uh, brioche, which is always delicious. Yes, yes. It's good times. Good times. Good times. <laughs> so, not only do you sell all this stuff here, but I see there's bins over here, which I've never haven't seen before. That's uh, that's all Norman stuff. We're actually uh, selling Norman stuff today, which is cool. A lot of people have been buying it, which is pretty awesome. That's cool. Uh, you can see one of the. I made this. I made this in the office last night. I made that one too. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Like I don't know. You guys haven't been to the new space yet, but we actually no. make stuff. So this banner, the zombies. like our banner, yeah, like we would be able when you to see us at the cons. Our banner is made. How did by. we do? Did we? Did I provide that to you, or did you print that somewhere else? You did that yourself. So that was through them before yes. I worked there. Yeah. Like these zombie targets, we made all those in house too. Wow. So it's cool to have that kind of access to some high end equipment. Like we did a Star Wars gaming experience. This thing was awesome, where we actually made you know that um, Star Wars tabletop role play yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know it comes with the miniatures and the cards. Yeah. We actually made tile plastic pieces, and I hand drew um, from a bird's eye perspective sand people, stormtroopers, snowtroopers, droids, wow. Wookies, and rebel soldiers. We printed out tons of them, and we stuck them on the tile on plastic tiles. We had wars oh, man. of characters versus characters, and we photocopied the cards, and you numbered them, so you were able to keep track of all of these different players on the board. It was the best start. Like a like 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 a risk esque kind of thing. It would it was it was imagine like this being the the game board, right? And it's a one inch grid, and instead of just having one rebel soldier, you've got ten platoons, almost. and they're running around doing stuff. Oh, man, it was so much fun. I'd play that. And we gave away action figures, and everybody who uh, played, they got to keep one of the the tiles, mm. so they would pick their favorite character. You know what we should do. Discussing things on the show, which probably will be edited out later on. But anyways, um, we started filming ourselves playing board games. I remember that. We did Waterdeep. Okay. We should do that. You as an have like your own custom tiles? No, like the ones you did for like something like that. We're oh, Star yeah. Wars thing, and we, c- we play it and yeah, videotape it and not? throw it on why the old not? YouTube channel. Sounds like an idea. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Coming up in the near present future. Sure. Um, so the other thought I had, since we do, you made our sign. And now you're on the back of our T-shirts, your work, and you're on our business cards now. And then I don't know if you told anybody your underwear, right? I heard I'm yes. on your underwear now too. Yes, on the back. On the back. <laughs> <laughs> Who's racist? That? Who's racist? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. We always got to go there. Um, any other stuff that people can look for besides this stuff that's already out? Is there anything coming up soon that's near completion? Food Fight is, is really the big next big thing. And I'm actually working with uh, setting up a nice uh, potential debut of that book at the Farmington Valley YMCA. Um, their reach is much wider than ours, um, especially with kids. And this book will finally um, bring about the release of Slappy O'Pappy and Brenda, the daughter of a teen, uh, daughter of a barbarian king, and uh, uh, Jurgen Gedet, the retired cartoon villain from the 40s. Like I, these are characters that I've been hanging on to and waiting to release to the wild, and uh, it's the right venue. We're looking at potentially September release. It's just got to get through the right hands. Like I've got the prototype ready to go. It's just got to get approved by um, the head guy over at the Y to to green light that release. But something like that would be. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All righty. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and, of course, go to the website. If you see the shark, you know it's free lunch. Yeah. Freelunchcomics.com. It's Matt Ryan, not the quarterback, the comic book artist. That's right.
We're here at Brass City Comic Con. It's the being a big podcast. We have finally curtailed the man who is in the one behind all of what's going on today, Professor Foster. Thank you for inviting us to the con. It's been an awesome time. We've had a great time. Oh, gentlemen, my absolute pleasure to invite you to have you here. And uh, it's our fifth annual con, and I'm at this point, it just kind of like I'd like to say it runs itself, but it almost does. Mm. So and it's a lot of fun. So tell us about. Uh, the con and how you first started it and uh, why you started it. Um, Bob Lyons from Le Legends of Superheroes and I years ago got uh, together to do a, a real small con up in the cafeteria. We had one vendor who brought in people and we never forgot that experience so maybe 10 years after that we said listen we can probably do the same thing in a little bigger space and I've known a lot of the vendors from here because we've known them for years and I've bought from them for years. And uh, it's worked out very well. We try to keep it, you know, try to improve it every year. And so you're, of course, through uh, Naugatuck uh, Valley Com uh, Community College. Mm. Brian and I and another guy that uh, does the show with us, uh, he's a student now at his Nuntuck Community College. We're both graduates of his Nuntuck Community College. So we, you know, know all about the community college life and everything. And uh, how is, uh, we don't really know much about Naugatuck because we're way up in Enfield, but tell us what about Naugatuck. Valley Community College for the folks out there who might not know anything about it. Um, it's one of the largest community colleges in the system and we bring students from as far away as Bridgeport and as far mm -hmm. north as Massachusetts which surprises me and Danbury and even so far as to Hartford so we got a quite a variety of students who come here. Uh, we have a president who I say is new but she's mm -hmm. been here like five or six years but it still seems new because of what she, the changes she's making uh, on campus and the impact she's having on our students. I've been teaching here for over 20 years. I love it. It you know, doesn't get tired. I have a nice, respectful relationship with my students. I encourage them in their academic pursuits and their life outside of this. I encourage them to talk about it in the classroom. And that's when I find out you know, that they have interests similar to mine, which is important. And that they have interests similar to the person next to you. You have mm -hmm. to open yourself up to figure out how that works. That if you leave a community college the same way you came here, you have to blame yourself because there are opportunities for you to meet people of different ethnicities, different races, different cultures, different nationalities. And it's a, a truly unique experience in America. Um, not trying to propose the opposite mm -hmm. experience for people, but if you went to a four-year college, People pretty much of the same economic background, same ethnic background. Mm. That's a stereotype, but yeah. sometimes it turns out to be true. Here, you have a chance to meet people of different ages, people who are new to this country, people who've had several generations of their family in this country. This is a real unique opportunity, opportunity for you to make yourself mm. something better. The relationship between the teachers and the, stu uh, the students, the uh, the ratio of teachers mm. and students, you will rarely ever see when you get to a four level, you know, yeah, four year exactly. school. So. This is, and I've had students coming back and said, you know, you were absolutely right. Mm. You know, this was a unique experience. And not to think of this as extended high school, because some people still have that point yeah. of view, you know, which will kind of get you in trouble, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you, like you said, you've taught here at uh, Naugatuck Valley for so long. What classes do you teach if people are like, oh, this guy's interesting. I want to no, take I a class with him. People, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go someplace else. The, uh, I teach communications. I teach... Um, Introduction to Literature, I teach African American Literature, the graphic novel literature, which was responding for a lot of my students who took that class, and they've always impressed me in that. Mm -hmm. uh, contemporary Literature, uh, I also teach the Self-Defense class, which is the Martial Arts Club is the, the sponsor for this event coming to campus. Uh -huh. A lot of my students are here, and they help out, and uh, it shows their devotion to the school and to the art. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, well, what's that have to do with martial arts? It has to do mm -hmm. with the idea is that you give of yourself, and mm -hmm. you give of yourself unselfishly, because that's important. Arts is and arts is in the name, so that kind of makes sense. And it's it's about the how that where that art takes place in your life. It's not yeah. something separate. People think, well, you're teaching people how to punch and hit. No, we're teaching them a new way of life. Mm. Is that if you have a mindset where things don't upset you, you have control of your anger, you have a purpose in your life. A lot of stuff that would make you fight kind mm. of disappear. Mm. And I am very fortunate. My students have been a reflection of that. Now, like you were saying earlier, you teach the. Uh, African American literature and the, uh, the comic books as well. Mm. Um, of course, I got to ask you because it just happened the big announcement of oh, Captain America switching mm. to the Falcon. Uh -huh. um, I think great thing. I love the Falcon. He's one of my favorite characters. Absolutely. Uh, do you think that's a? I know, I know the answer, but like a huge step for mainstream comic books. We know a lot of the smaller comic books, like we talked to Alex Simmons earlier and Blackjack. Oh, excellent person. God, it was an awesome interview. It's like, I didn't have to do anything. I could have sat there. It was great. Yeah, just put uh, a quarter in the jukebox <laughs> and the music starts playing. Exactly. So, 
we'd like to get your feelings on the whole Captain America deal. Oh, sure. I think that you're right. For some people, it is a really big deal because mm. they really don't read comics. That if you go back to 1999... Sam, you know, mm. took the position of the of the of Captain America back then, and then if you just remember the Truth by um, Kyle Baker, where they took the story of the experimenting on the black soldiers, and the first Captain America was a black guy, mm. then you're really not impressed with that idea. The yeah. more you know, and eh, we've seen this before, you yeah. know, um, the idea of turning Thor into a woman, they did that before, and yeah, in Thor Earth Girl. X. Yeah. In uh, in 1999, once yes. again, and then of course Storm was yes. was Thor for a while. Yes. Okay, and then you had in the What If series, they had the nurse who worked for Don Blake yeah. became Thordis, you know, yeah. in a What If episode. So I mean, we've seen it before, yeah. you know. It's, we're not like ooh, you know, yeah. the world's just changing. You know, yeah, they all crazy, you yeah. know. <laughs> exactly. Um, so no, it's the more you see, the more mm. you you will see, you know, see it again. So there's any other books out there that you do you still read comic books as well besides okay. everything what is yeah, like your favorites uh, <laughs> when you go to the store what are the ones you grab on the on the mainstream comic books for a while i was reading the black panther on a regular basis i really don't read a lot of the current series until i just see something that kind of stands out to me and i want to pick it up uh lord knows what's happening with the avengers i mean you know, <laughs> it's a different guy I, every week it uh, seems like, yeah it? yeah so i but um, can't we, I, I, can I call it the cavalcade of stars? Yeah, that's what they call that. <laughs> yeah. Keep bringing more people in. Like, the retread of the, uh, <laughs> the folks with the camera. A lot of ideas. Let's throw you know, more right? guys in there. Yeah, can I help you out? Yeah, which way did you come in? <laughs> um, but yeah, the idea that I don't read a lot of series on a regular basis, but if I see like something collected, like Magnus was one of mm. my favorite characters from the 60s. I love that robot fighter. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, um, when I see popular characters being reinvented, which is the nature of storytelling. Some people, oh, how did they just leave him alone? Mm. <coughs> Please, the Superman that you read now is nothing like the Superman from 1938. You mm. know, he's not the same one from 1960. He's not the same one from 1970 or 1990. His stories changes all the time, and, and that's what you need to do: refresh the story. Uh, I was talking to Chris Claremont the other day, name dropping, <laughs> and uh, and I said, man, I loved what you did when you read to do Superman. I mean, mm. it just I couldn't put it down. It was great, you know. And he was very gracious, you know. So. Um, the retelling of, of different characters, it's the nature of the job. Mm. So people shouldn't like be offended, you know. Did anybody really think when they killed Superman that they yeah. killed Superman? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It was like in the Star Trek movies, was Spock really dead? Yeah. You know, come on. Yeah. You, know, okay? you really have to propose yeah. you really have to suspend belief beyond what they're yeah. projecting, you know, to kind of fall for that, you know. Um, you know they're coming back. I mean that's the yeah. nature of fiction. Yeah. So and it'll change again, you know. I'm still kind of upset that they killed Black Goliath, you know. Mm. But I am, of course, uh, 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 excited that his, uh, was it his nephew is taking over the mantle now? <laughs> Come on, it's comics. Who can keep up? Yeah, there's so many of them. Oh, dude, it's not as cheap as it used to be when I was <laughs> yeah, a kid. Yeah, it's 15 you. cents was nothing. <laughs> now it's like five bucks. Five bucks you know, a book. I don't know. I gotta get out his extra job just to pay for the comic book. And there's no more one shots. <laughs> we're not doing any one shots. No. We, we got, you got money in your pocket. You <laughs> yeah. can't go home yet. Yeah. Uh, so if anyone wanted to get information about Naugatuck Valley and the community college and all that stuff you got going on, where would they do that? Right on the website, uh, Naugatuck Valley Community College website. And they, all the stuff that we're doing, including this show, is posted. Um, our uh, college relations and college media department does a very good job. Alrighty, so if you want more information about Esnata Community College or Naugatuck Valley Community College or any of the community colleges in Connecticut, check them out because if you're not ready for four years, two years isn't that long. Everything starts here. You want to introduce yourself? Okay, I'm DJ Arneson. I was the editor of Dell Comic Books during the 60s, during the decline of Dell, unfortunately. And at that time, I wrote, created, and developed Lobo, which was the first black comic book to star a black character in his own comic book. The first one, and it was the one that we just saw on screen. Very proud of that, and as you can see, it's so, so wait. on. And Dale Comics was one of the few comic book companies that was sympathetic to the cause of Negroes in the 1960s and 1950s. They had an outstanding record. Uh, and well, some of my best books in my collection are from Dell. I thought you were going to say some of my best friends, but okay, yeah. that's even better, yeah. So, yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah I don't I, they will right. can't marry my sister, yeah, okay. but some of my best <laughs> friends. I'm sorry, you said the great. 60s. I have to hold this up. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, here it is. 
Yeah, I did that. There, I, this I is one of the, the no, he didn't write it, but this is one of the series that you edited. I, yeah, I edited, yeah. I produced and, and, it. And and these these were my boys back in the day, absolutely. you know. Besides Link, Pete, yeah. and Julie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Spy. Yes, absolutely. No, you weren't that old. The, yes, I am, ma'am. But thank you. You were reading comics back then? Of course. What? What? Back in well, the '60s? Of course I was. <laughs> that's when he started reading them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I come by this honestly. Anyway, I'm hang on. To, this is history. <laughs> this, no, no, so it is. This is well, because I've talked about it in my book because I met Tony Tallarico. Yeah. But, and I, and I found out about him about totally by accident. I was I was doing a small show over across Long Island Sound in a little art gallery. Yeah. And I had my, my pieces up, and this cover was one of them. Okay. So I got a letter about a month later. Tony Tallarico said I was walking through the art gallery, and I saw my work up. Oh, you interested? I said, dude. Absolutely. He, he did the artwork. If you ever read this the, for a second. Gotcha. If you ever read the, uh, the Colville interview, and then there's one by the guy in Canada, Walter, I can't pronounce his last name, very nice gentleman, he did an interview, and I straightened all of that out as to who actually, well, it was important, you know, somebody no, else claimed it. of course it was. The history's got to be told. It. Tell him how you got the idea to do the comic. Well, and the, the, the whole idea was, <laughs> I had... You know, I'm going to make a suggestion. Phil, face that yeah, way. Nothing else gets yellow. The light is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me interrupt. Go for it. Thank you, my brother. Anytime. Anyway, I'm going to tell you the brief story because when I was editor at Dell, one of my jobs was to find new characters. We did a lot of licensing of movies and TV shows. Absolutely. We did very, very few new stuff. I found a book, it was called The Negro Cowboys, and it was the story of the Buffalo Cowboys who had been in the Civil War, went west, became cowboys. I said, there's a character. Alex, would you ask TC to turn that down a little bit, please? Yes. Thank you. A black cowboy who has been unjustifiably accused of a crime, he did not do it, and he would be then the typical hero under a cloud. But if you recall, he's never identified as being black nope. or Negro. No, he's not. He's, he was a character. I loved him. We did two issues. Unfortunately, it was at that time that Dell was on the way out. And sales were everything, regardless of the titles. And if a book, in the case of Lobo or a lot of others, didn't meet the, the minimum sales, Absolutely. in that case, they said, oh, it goes. Off. And there was never, ever any intimation that Lobo was cut because of the character. Never any. I'm was, loving that. Because I tell that story, and I talk to young people in library and such settings, I said, do you know about this character's way? Do you know who the Buffalo Soldiers were? And then I tell, oh, thank you. And I'm telling them a story about how... Oh, is this yours? I think, yeah, I don't yeah, want to lose that's that. That's true. I'll put took, it in my took pocket. the man's card. That's terrible. <laughs> I can't trust you. That was Go my ahead. card. Buffalo right. Soldiers. Go ahead. And it was a valuable part of our history, but a lot of people didn't know it. They didn't even know where the name came from. Exactly. And I found that book, and I read it. I still have it on my desk at home in my library. And I said at the time, what an idea. I called him Black Lobo at the time, but President Helen Meyer of Dell didn't want to push it quite that far. This was 1965. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So she said, okay, Lobo works for me, but let's not push it too far. I said, fine. We did the book, two issues, and that's the first one, and the other is the second one. I'm just now finishing oh, the, the manuscript one. for my brand new book, Untold Stories of uh, Black Comics. Okay. You and I are going to talk, because that segment is going to go in my book. Great. That would be wonderful. So Notice he didn't give you a choice. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm what available. Top, Top never here? I'm sorry, would you say that out loud? <laughs> we have a son in the movie business, yes. and he's very interested and in putting a project oh. together. He, when I told him about all of this, he said, Dad, he said, follow it up. Documentary, movie, something, something, something. Because this is 50 years. Yeah. Absolutely. No. So Anniversary. Is, we were very, very young at the time. <laughs> you were kids. Do, do, are there stories that you can tell us about you two? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. Oh, you told me again. That'll be the other document. They're very, very so long stories. Yeah. They're long, long stories. Right. But listen, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Alex and I were two of the founding members of the Black Combo Convention in Philadelphia. Really? I said I could speak for myself, and I know he'd speak for it. We want you to come. Well, and you let you me know. Wife. Give me. I, uh, I, I don't have a card. Just send me the information. You have all my contact okay, information. Okay, I'll get right. to you, we'll and we'll work something Absolutely. out. Absolutely, because we would be honored to have. I'll tell That'd you. I'll great. go one further. Uh, where do you, do you? What part of the country do you live in? We live in Woodbury, just up the okay, road. So, so going to no. Columbia University would not be a big problem for you, right? No. Okay, because we're working on something also for Columbia. Oh, really? Right, uh, a conference, and I would love to have you at that as well. You let me know. And you got I'm, it. You know, you as long okay. as I'm here, I'm here. Dude, then we want to take advantage of it now. <laughs> okay. What, what does yeah. that mean? No, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Okay, tell great. me about the business now with the black comics. I tell you what, I do better than that. Before you leave, you'll give me my address. I'll send you copies of my two books about black comics. Great. Oh, and wow. I'll sign them for terrific. you. Oh, oh great. Oh, great. You'll write on his book. Well, it's cool. There you go. Oh, Shut great. up, Mr. Signature. Okay. Uh, uh, so, but no, that would be my absolute pleasure. But oh, that would be it's exciting. changed a lot from the beginning when there was like one or two. Now there's a whole world of them. Pen Alex pen. and I personally know individual guys who've written great books about black comics. Yeah, but this was the first one. And Absolutely. And you read, I just got a history Because you predated Black Panther by one year. Yeah. Black Panther didn't go I, I, I just read a book, a history, I forget who did it. It's a trilogy of three books. They do the real history of all comic books. Mm -hmm. And it pointed out that Lobo was the first black character to star in, in his, his own book. And, and is listed as such in all the booksellers, mm -hmm. and is yeah. rightly so. Well, I I did not see that book until I went to a store. A buddy of mine. I told you I had to find it. Right. And I I'd been a friend of his for like five years. Yeah. I said, "Hey, any black comic books? Just let me know." So I'm walking through his store, and this is on the shelf. Oh yeah, I was going to tell you about that. <laughs> I am no. Man hasn't come to yet. What a nimble. So anyway, wait, before you guys say goodbye, do you guys have any questions for them? <laughs> okay, good. We'll be back after a word from our sponsor. Yeah. We just arrived, and I. And you got to walk around. Please, we're gonna there's a couple around. of kids that I would we like to meet you as well. So okay. You guys. okay. We love you guys. You okay. regular customers. I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna sign off for these nice people here and uh, say thank you. Thank you very Indeed. much. Yeah, I'm not and going Bill, anywhere. thank you very much. Oh, dude.